start and people have aspirations to go higher. But we teach you how to become a candidate and we also help you become a candidate. The mission statement, Alan. Our mission is to support and promote precinct delegates in the state of Michigan addressing the political concerns of the precinct delegates and their community. And educating them about current political issues so that they can share with their community. Our immediate goal uh, is to develop a strong precinct delegate infrastructure at the state level. This will allow us to focus our efforts on generating community empowerment and forming political policy, which will assist in improving education, public transportation, health care resources, crime prevention, and crime prevention, and other issues in our community. Okay. What is a precinct delegate? Al? <laughs> the role of a precinct delegate is one of the most important, at least understood, of any elected office. It is an active precinct delegate who wins elections for the Democratic Party. Precinct delegates are elected directly by the voters of each local voting precinct to serve as a bridge between voters and the Democratic organization itself. As a precinct delegate, you represent the Democratic Party in your neighborhood. You represent your neighborhood at the Democratic Party. I'm bothering him because he's going to call out and pay attention. Okay, so this is very important. When I say know your power, precinct delegates are the reason that the city council person sits there. You are the bridge. You let your constituents know who they should vote, vote for or just what's going on there. You know, that's how you, you're getting out the vote. You are the power. Without you, they wouldn't be there. So that's a very important point right there. As a precinct delegate, your job is to vote at, a Dem vote at Democratic Party state, county, congressional, and district conventions. And caucuses. And caucuses. That's not on here. It's an update. Um, help, de help Democrats get registered to vote. Take information or issues and candidates to the voters in your precinct. Identify other Democrats and recruit new party members. In order for us to win, we need new people joining the Democratic Party. That's your job. Identify, okay, we did that. Help turn out the Democratic vote in your neighborhood on election day. Keep Democrat leaders informed about the issues that concern voters. So not only do you bring information in, you have meetings at your home in your community and you take information back. It's okay for you to call your congressman, your state rep, your city council person and say, look, in my neighborhood, my constituents, blah, 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 they want to stop saying here. They want to, you know, and give a reason why. That is your purpose. Brandon Dillon is our chair, and he's supposed to be here today. Um, precinct delegates and congressional districts. So I already said we have 14 congressional districts in Michigan. Our agenda, a quick beginning. Short history, state convention, 14th update from Rick Blocker, he's here. MVP update from Ryan or Brandon when they come in our announcements. Quick history. I'll have to introduce you. Yes, you're fine. All right, um, I know we probably, a lot of you have already heard this uh, about the power of precinct delegate. A lot of you probably are, if you're just becoming a precinct delegate, trying to figure out what it is. So I'm gonna tell you a little story to try and help you understand, you know, the power of precinct delegates. You know, there was uh, once a time here in the state of Michigan when at state conventions, it, well, first of all, let me start here. For gubernatorial elections, there are only a few positions elected by the people and there are others elected by state party. Your attorney general, your lieutenant governor, Supreme Court candidates, 
are all elected by the state party. There was once a time that those candidates were only elected by the bylaws of the Michigan Dem Democratic Party by precinct delegates only. There was once a time when precinct delegates who were elected went to a convention. You were automatically a member. And we were the ones who decided who our delegates for these positions were. State Attorney General, that's how my good, great leader, Dick Austin, became the first African-American Secretary of State and served as the longest Secretary of State in the country. That's how Frank Kelly, one of the longest serving Attorney Generals, won his race. It's one of the ways Al Sharpton did so well in his presidential election bid. The state party has changed those rules because the longest serving chair in the country, a former chair to the Michigan Democratic Party, felt threatened and felt like he was going to lose one year. So they changed the bylaws. So precinct delegates are no longer the holding of the power, holding the power of the party. Now it's anybody who's a member can vote at these conventions. Mark Brewer was the longest serving chair in the country. Just got beat, what, four or six years ago, four years ago? He served for 22 years. He was chair of all chairs. And was threatened by a Detroit precinct delegate at one point. And almost lost to another Detroit precinct delegate. And they ended up becoming co-chairs. I think he's a city attorney now for the city of Detroit. <laughs> No, the Tyler. But Tracy does get that power. Al Sharpton won Detroit and won more congressional districts out of Michigan and more delegates out of Michigan than any other state in the country because of the power of the precinct delegates. Richard Austin, the first and only African American Secretary of State in the state of Michigan, the longest term Secretary of State in the country, won because of the power of precinct delegates. Frank Kelly. One, because of the power of the precinct delegates. You have power beyond measure with the Democratic Party. And even more so in your community. Part of the reason why people aren't informed today is because somebody hasn't taken up the mantle to make sure that they have the information they need. That somebody, unfortunately, is us. Coleman Young, greatest mayor of the city of Detroit. I don't care if you disagree. <laughs> I said what I said and I meant what I said. <laughs> if you look at his history and his story and how he got elected, and you ask anybody that was a part of that administration, they'll tell you it was because of how he was able to maneuver and use the power of the precinct delegates. We got power, y'all. We just ain't been using it. And so when somebody tells you and asks you, about precinct delegates, about them, whether or not you're a real elected official, whether or not what you, what you actually do, you're the most powerful elected official in the community because you have a direct effect on whether somebody is informed about the issues or not. And you have a direct effect on what the party does statewide or not. No, claim, understand the power. And then put it to good use.
chair of the Michigan Black Caucus chair, Keith William and Williams is in the house, okay? Right. Keith, we need you to come speak. Right. Keith ain't gonna tell you everything about him, because he don't tell y'all that he's in charge of, of a youth group. I just said, Keith, tell about the kids, tell about the kids. He don't like that. He don't, I don't know why he don't put that out there. But this man is a mentor to so many kids that he wants kids to do the right thing with them with their lives. So because me and Tashana and Melinda decided that we pushed him to run. Keep, please, keep, please, keep, please. Because he's already doing the work. Mm -hmm. You know, for the last 10 years that I know about, nothing has been done with the Michigan Democratic Party through the Black Caucus because our issues haven't been coming to the table because of what? Poor leadership. Mm -hmm. So we need to have somebody in leadership that knows what to do, that's already doing it. Let me bring to you Keith Williams! Woo! First, I want to thank you all, you guys, for running for precinct delegate, because I'm going to tell you a story. I ran for precinct delegate uh, back in 2000. In 2003, I was elected to county commissioner in a special election against uh, George Cushenberry's sister-in-law, Cheryl Cushenberry. Mm. So I know what the power of the precinct delegate is all about. If you organize right, you can control the agenda of the Democratic Party because they need you. You are important because I use the precinct delegate to catapult me to where I'm at today. I organized my community. I got involved in networks. So once you organize the block clubs, you organize your community councils, then you become a voice when you go to this process. See, the power is at the top. The power is not down here. You want the power to come from here to go to the top. And that's what you guys are all about. And I, you know, through uh, being a preacher, that has afforded me to be elected to office. I was, I served on the uh, county commission from 2003 to 2003, 10. I got prostate cancer in 2010. And I'm a seven year cancer survivor. Yeah. <laughs> and then scripturally, from 2003 to 2010, on, and, and Genesis, the second chapter says, on the seventh day, Jesus got rest. And so maybe that was time for me to go. And then from 2010 to 2017, I'm seven years, it's completion. So the cancer's I'm done, okay? That's I truly believe that. Basically, I've been, a, I've been a county commissioner. I just served as a chairman of the Board of Zoning Appeals, um, dealing with all the land use issues. So when I'm not afraid you know, to step in the gap because we need somebody to go bring us all together st statewide to try to change the Democratic Party and try to change the fabric of our politics. I tell people this, we should be tired of having our school closed. Mm -hmm. We should be tired of having no economic development. Mm -hmm. We should be tired of them taking our health care from us. Mm -hmm. We should be tired of just, just be tired, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it seems like the folks at the top they get all the juice and we do you know, we get good government. Good government is bad roles, taking up your schools and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And we should be tired. What I'm trying to do is run to bring the power back to us. Okay, we should stop begging folks to do something for us. Mm -hmm. We should raise our money, we should organize ourselves, we should come up with policies that can affect all of us, just not a few of us. Okay, and I've been in leadership, I've been ways and means, so I know how to negotiate budgets and all that other stuff. But the most important thing is I care. And that's why I spend all of my days with my children. I have a nonprofit called Courageous. And, what, and the, the, the reason why I came up with Courageous, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Courageous about five men standing up for God. We need men and women standing up for God who's going to help our people to get to a point where they need to go. And so I got these kids. I have a contract with DPS for middle schools, a baseball, and elementary baseball, track and field, and football. And my whole life is trying to elevate these kids' life through sports. Because if I can elevate these kids' life through sports, sports, then I can get to the family. So I was saying, to strengthen the family, automatically going to strengthen the kids. And so that's my nonprofit. I've been doing it since, for, since I got uh, unelected, because I was beat by a term-limited state senator, senator who had five pensions. Mm. OK? Mm. Five pensions. And I'm not going to tell you the person's name because I'm not here to, uh, to disperse from anybody else, but I'm just saying to you, we need to start changing this. When a person is lifelong, 
and they don't bring the results with the lifelong. You get where I'm coming from? We need somebody to produce, and we need to have a scorecard now with these, uh, these politicians. Yep. If they're not bringing the bacon home, then why do we need them? Right, right. This is about results. Right, yeah. When I was on the Wayne County Commission, my whole focus was the community, and I'm gonna tell you this, the, um, I brought back about $10 million over seven years. I was bringing money for pocket parks. A little pocket park, because everybody can't go to Bell Out, they have transportation to go to Bell Out. I put new uh, barbecue pits, new conceivables. I was doing all that, trying to keep the community together, keep the families together. And this was politics was all about. It's not about you, it's never been about me, because I was raised right. I was the only child out of nine to finish high school, finish college. But I had a pair, I had a family love was unconditionally. My community loved me, and I loved it all also. But at the end of the day, politics is about serving. Politics is about helping. And politics is about solving problems. Mm -hmm. And if we can't do that, then, then shame, shame on us. Right. Shame on precinct delegates, shame on the whole infrastructure. I'm tired of the people talking about the middle class. What is the middle class? Okay? I'm tired of these politicians come in. And now whoever this group is that is, is going after our politicians when they like they voted with Donald Trump, we should do the same thing they did to us. They showed Brock about no respect for the eight years right. he was there, and we should show him some We should do the same thing to them. But also, let me say this to you. Then I'm gonna shut up and get on my way. Let me say this to you. There's two kind of voter uh, suppression. One what the Republicans did, yeah. and one what the Democrats did. Think about this. In 2012, all the Democrats started running away from Barack Obama. Remember that? Yeah. They ran away from him like he was the plague. Democrats. I never get the Ar the uh, Senator of Arkansas. They asked him, do you support Barack Obama? He could not say it. The young lady was running in Kentucky, could not support Barack Obama. But look what happened. He's, he's walking away with one of the highest uh, polling, uh, polling results because the man was doing the right thing. Right. So if you want somebody to cut and run, you don't need me. If you want somebody to fight with you, you need then come with me. Because I'm going to fight, but I'm going to fight in an intelligent way, and I'm going to come up with some programs, and I got an idea to do a statewide convention. Not the Democratic convention, it's the People's Convention. They did it in 1972 in, in Indianapolis. Why can't we do the same thing? Yep. Okay, and come up with a platform that's going to serve everybody from, from, from Benton Harbor to Saginaw to Detroit and to Flint because we're all in this together. Right. Unions, business, all of us in together. And it's not, it's nothing wrong with making money. But you got to make money the right way. Who's going to help? You can help somebody else. God bless you. Just remember this. Just remember this. I always say this. It's not how many steps we take. It's the quality of the footprints we leave behind. We got to do some quality of footprints we leave behind. God bless everybody. Thank you for the love. And, and he said, if you want to be involved with the Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus, you can stay after and talk to me. Because we have, raise your hands if you're already involved. There's a lot of people in here. That, yeah. So, it's real, yeah. You want to be involved in it. So, there's a couple mm -hmm. people I say I'm going to talk to after. Yeah. Do we ask a question? That's at the end. You want okay. To yes, ma'am. What's MDSCC 10 SEC? Where? Bottom. Michigan Democratic okay. State Central. State Central. So we're about to get into that in the class. State Central. Yep. Yeah. God bless everybody. All right. So, I guess let me put a disclaimer out there. Republicans in the room. It's only Democrats. I want to kill the, to kill the elephant in the room, right? That's right. Republicans in the room. No. Are, are, there, are there any progressives in the room? Are there any progressives in the room? Yes. yes. Is there anybody excited about the upcoming convention on February 11th? Yes. How many people are planning to attend the state convention on February 11th? All right. And we're also going to make an announcement at the end that United Christian Gospel Group. 
we're doing something there at the convention. Right. So you want to attend because you're getting honored. Sound like you just so. made that announcement. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. You tapped your head. So so we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We're we're that. that. We're not so but so there's uh, we're gonna run through this real quick because we know we got some guests. We're not gonna make it too quick, we're gonna make it understandable. Uh, for those who have never been to a state convention. Raise your hand. That's my guess. All right. So the party does the party does two state conventions. Uh, one during the odd years and one during the even years. And they actually just in, and they just um, added another convention, it's sort of like an endorsement convention to, to endorse their statewide candidates. Didn't it used to be like that, and now they just in the past recent years, they've added that as well. Um, a state convention uh, is really the highest form of how we run our party. That's how we elect our leaders for the state party. We elect the people who manage the budget for the state party. Does anybody know what the annual budget of the state party is? No. Well, the chair is coming tonight. You might want to ask. <laughs> um, but it, it, it ain't peanuts. I can tell you that. A lot. Uh, it costs a lot of money to run a state party. You hire a lot of people and you try to work on issues for the whole entire state. Um, at the state convention, I'm sorry, let me. Believe Believe So it's, it's a, the state convention coming up is where we elect our party leadership. There are three conventions today. There's a, also a state convention where we elect, where we endorse our candidates. Uh, and then there's a convention where we all come together. Uh, platform we endorse our we uh, also elect our caucus leaders our convent our congressional district leaders uh, as well as our party club leaders usually that's done prior to the actual convention so most people here are in the 13th 14th or 12th convention uh, or con congressional district we got the 10th congressional district here you'll all be electing chairs for that congressional district at this state convention everyone in here can belong to a state party caucus we just heard from uh, Keith Williams, who is uh, running for chair of the Black Caucus. I don't know if you have a sheet here, but there are other caucuses that you can be a part of. There's um, a Disabilities Caucus. There's an Italian Caucus. There's a Hunting, Fishing, and Gun Ownership Caucus. There's a Caucus. American Caucus. It's on Instagram. Scandinavian Caucus. Oh, it's on Instagram. Okay. Many, many okay. others. Find a caucus to get involved with. There's a progressive caucus, which is very active as well. These caucuses, these congressional districts, they all work on issues pertaining to those individuals of that caucus or that congressional district, constituents, that is. Well, that's what they're supposed to do. Congressional districts, really, and caucuses, the meaning of them, to be honest, is to help motivate, register, uh, as well as um, uh, make sure that people are participating in the political process or in the democratic process. So get involved. Um, why do we have a state convention? I just went over there to elect our leaders. How can you play a part of it? As precinct delegates, you're automatically members of the party. All you gotta do is show up. Most people had to register to be a member of the party if you're not a precinct delegate 30 days in advance. They automatically know precinct delegates have the power and are involved in their community as well as party politics, so they allow you to show up day of to become a member. You have to get credentials in order to participate. You can show up and watch without voting in anything without being credentialed. Anybody can do that. The Democratic Party is an open process. We have open meetings. So if any Democrat has a closed meeting, they're violating the bylaws of the party. So if you're an identifiable Democrat, Democrat without voting, you can go and participate. But in order to vote as a precinct delegate, in order to participate in any caucus, any congressional district, and the chair's race for the state party at the end of that day, you have to be credentialed. And there's a time limit on, how, on when you can be credentialed or not. It's on the paper. Should be on the schedule right at the top. It's like seven to three, seven, seven to yes. How long is it if I seven, walk in? It all depends. The registration process all depends on this app. Uh, we're going to hold questions to the end, William, right, only so we can run through it. But write that down. That's mm -hmm. very important. Right. And it's also important that you don't look at the 3 o'clock thing. 
you think in your mind seven to eight because that's when caucuses start right. to vote. If you're getting there past 12 o'clock, you can miss you it. Missed it. <laughs> All right, so I just went over who's able to vote. If your precinct doesn't need to show up that day, you would have to have registered 30 days prior to in order to be a member of the party in order to vote at the actual convention. Now, there are state convention committees and their functions are very important. Most of these have been elected already. They're elected prior to the convention. The credentials committee basically sets the rules and the guidelines of who's able to vote uh, and, and in some, in some um, who's able to vote and in some cases who's able to run for office for um, the, state, the state party. There was one year that uh, a good friend, or a, 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 not necessarily a friend, but he was a guy I really looked up to by the name of Ron Scott. He ran for chair of the party, and prior to him campaigning, the credentialing committee sort of changed the rules on him and put a fee on whether on him having to be a candidate, become a candidate for chair. It wasn't, it's not in the bylaws, but the credentialing committee put this rule together and it was passed and he had to, I forget what the fee was, it was ridiculous. And he showed up on the day of planning to be a candidate uh, and then and, uh, credential or a uh, call from the floor as a candidate running for chair and they stopped him in his tracks and said, well, you didn't pay that fee first. That's how powerful the credentialing committee is. It can hold out a candidate. It literally can. Raise your hand if you're before. on that committee. And you're Anybody in here make the credentialing committee elected by the congressional district? What? They come to this meeting. We had a meeting teaching you how to join in your congressional district. Yeah. And so the credentialing committees are set prior to the convention. And they meet prior to the convention. You don't necessarily have to go to Lansing. You can do it over the phone. They're long, drawn out, two, three hour meetings. But it's important in that committee, it's more powerful than people. The Rules Committee sets the rules of engagement for the actual um, election. And it, it, it's, and it also sets the rules for uh, the chartering of caucuses that day. Some, some people, there is a, a couple of people that are trying to start new caucuses. And the Rules Committee deals with the chartering of the caucuses. Anybody here on the Rules Committee? In your congressional district. So a lot of congressional districts, not all of them, I think the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th meet on the second Saturday of the month. Just this past, this month, they, they had those elections. Right? They had conventions. You have county and district conventions. And in Wayne County, we don't have a party. So it's, so we have district conventions. And that's, and that's actually, where That's we actually were. supposed to be somewhere in the state bylaws. I haven't seen it. Why Wayne County doesn't have a, a county party. That's something we need to look into in the yeah. future. And they say we don't have a county party because we have too many too people many people right. within the county. We're the only county with more than one congressional district. Right. So everybody, all everybody had to have their conventions before the 28th. So there's still some going on, some county conventions coming up, and people are gonna okay. get put on the committee, if, you know, be voted on by their people. Okay. All right, the platform committee is self-explanatory. The state party has a platform that we don't initiate probably enough of, and we don't hold our state party leaders' feet to the fire to make sure that they're abiding by this, this platform. Um, and I've heard that there are new things coming uh, to be added to the state party's platform. The platform committee normally, normally is elected through congressional district and county districts. I've seen it also not elected through, but appointed by the chair. But normally, they're supposed to be elected by congressional and county districts. Same thing with the, well, the appeals committee, I've never seen elected through the county or the district, uh, district uh, at the county or the district level. Appeals committee is normally only appointed by the chair. The appeals committee is important. The appeals committee basically, after the election, after the election of your congressional district, your caucus, and or the state party, if there is a a challenge on that election. That challenge goes through the appeals committee. I've been in congressional districts where there was almost an all-out fight yes. over the result. 
and they had to redo the election. The only way they were able to redo the election is someone wrote those complaints down, submitted them to the appeals committee, the appeals committee met and came up with the next steps. And they said, okay, well, we're gonna redo the election. That wasn't fair, based on the bylaws of the party. They redid the election once. There was a complaint and an appeal sent through the committee for the same congressional district. They ended up having three elections oh to elect the chair of a congressional district. Wow. <coughs> Paid for by the State Park mm. wow. and your membership. Mm. 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 And then I've seen the appeals committee also say, no, that election was fair. We will not grant you an appeal to have another election. But the appeals committee is just as powerful as the credentialing committee. And, and if you haven't looked into it two years from now, try to get on the appeals committee, try to get on the credentialing committee. Those are very, very powerful committees when it comes to running who are the future leaders of the party. What and who are you voting for? Of course, caucuses will be running. The schedule is uh, in front of you. Uh, our congressional districts will be running, and of course the state party chair. It's always like this. Most caucuses are in the morning, in the early, in the early morning. You got a nine o'clock, and I think it's a ten thirty for the caucuses. But you have to be credentialed in order to vote. They give you a badge, right? You walk up with your membership card or your precinct delegate card. It's better to have your membership card because they scan it and put a barcode in it and it spits out a little tag that you put on your, uh, that you wear on your lapel. But they'll also type your name in and it'll spit out the same tag for you. It takes a little bit longer. So they separate the lines, and I'm sort of answering your question now. They separate the lines when you get credentials. Precinct delegates have their own sign in. I think this is the first year that they're doing that. Precinct delegates having their own registration yeah, for credentials. That's what we doing. <laughs> well, <no. laughs> and so you so it should be a, a smoother process this time around. Shouldn't last as long. No, it should. Uh, caucuses are in the morning. Congressional districts are shortly after that in the afternoon. After lunch. And then at the end of the day, the state party chairs election. Now uh, it's a long day. Don't get me wrong. It's a really long day. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time you get to the state party's chair's election, though, because the, the candidates are campaigning all day, a lot of people have made up their mind. Or some people have left. I, I remember at, being at a convention uh, where they took so long to get to the election, half the people that started during the day had already left. And the only people that were, that were still there to vote were UAW members. <laughs> that actually happened. That, that actually happened. That actually happened. And it was, I think it was a strategy, to be honest. Um, and so it's a long day. I've also seen uh, the, the election for chair not even happen. I remember when Mark Brewer was running for re-election for the last time, uh, he actually he bowed out. And, 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 and allow Lon to, to take on uh, the chairman's position before the election actually happened. Uh, and so it's gone uh, different ways depending on the year and depending on how contentious the chairman's race is, I do believe. Um, and so I've seen the congressional district uh, elections last a long time, but it's a long day, be prepared. Don't pack a lunch because we ask you to come to a lunch for precinct delegates. Uh, but if you want to pack a lunch and, and, and share it with me, that's okay. <laughs> um, so how long are the terms? All terms are two years. All of them. Chair's terms two years, vice chair's two years, congressional district's two years, caucuses are two years. How can you become part of the executive board for the following? Caucus, congressional district, state party, and committee. Get involved and ask. Get involved and run. Be a part of the slate right now and get on the executive board. How many people, uh, I want you to stand up, are running on a slate for executive board committee? In your district. In right. your district, executive board. Lena, what are you running at? Uh, State Central Committee. Okay, Mark? Treasurer. Treasurer for what? 14. 14. <laughs> 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 um, I'm running to, uh, 
maintain my seat as a delegate on the state senate. Who else is running on a, uh, okay. How many are running on a slate for a caucus? And as progressive caucus, anything. Barbara, you are. Gary, you are. So we gotta say what a caucus is. Caucus is the Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus. How many are running on a Black Caucus slate? The different caucuses are on this sheet. Yeah. Mm. And so we have the Progressive Caucus. Well, Link, are you on that slate, Link, or just Black Caucus? Just Black Caucus. Oh, just representing Progressive <laughs> <laughs> Any other caucuses? Just the Black Caucus and the what caucus? It's not too late, especially for the black office. It's not too late to run for any call. Some states will tend up until the morning question. of. Because <laughs> we're asking questions and answers. So this is the most important thing right now. As precinct delegates, we want to educate you so you can know your power. These caucuses are very, very important. If you wish, to run in one of these caucuses, voice it now. You need to let us know. Because we can help you sit on it. I know about the Michigan Black Caucus, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit biased, because I'm already executive member. I've been it for two years. And what it has done for me, and raise your hand if you're executive board member. Already Black Caucus. Marcus Gray, Avenal Hogan, Joey left. It was probably about five of us in here, but some of them left. What we do and what a caucus do is statewide. It takes you statewide. So you have the ability to meet people from different cities and work throughout the state to help push the agenda of that caucus. For the Black Caucus, it's the African American agenda, which is very, well, all caucuses are very important, but you know, that's my group, that's what I'm in. So, um, if you look on that list and it's something that you want to join, the Women's Caucus, I urge you, do so. If you want to get involved with the Black Caucus, see me. You're going to be involved in the Black Caucus. We have committees, each caucus has their committee. They might have a youth committee, a senior committee, uh, um, political education committee. Political education the committee. committee. There are all kinds of committees to be a part of on any But any the caucus will take you statewide. Right. If you have aspirations on running for office in the future or having uh -huh. an organization to go out, guess what? You done went through the state and met different people already. That's one thing. Okay. And then Ryan we, from MDP. <laughs> so if you if you want to join a caucus and you're interested, please. Oh, you're you're with us. So there's a lot of people that I've called already, and I, it's impossible for me to reach out to everyone because our list is so strong. Anthony, you didn't raise your hand. Really? Really, you're not with me? Okay. <laughs> Um, really quickly, <coughs> can I have the hands of the folks who are brand new precinct delegates, never been to convention? Oh, Keep man. them up, okay? Congratulations! Okay, yes, we can. Uh, William wants, and then another thing about caucus. When we stand up and say in this room who's running or in slates, guess what, you guys? Just like they're going to support you in your endeavors, you need to be at their caucus meeting at that time. Like, at my caucus meeting, I want to. Y'all can vote for me. That's right. Okay? Y'all can vote for Avenal. That's very important because if I'm on this caucus and you're on that, it's a lot to get done. So. We'll do the stand up first, and everybody stand up who's running on a slate for a caucus. Or, sorry, Mark, you got to do it again. Congressional District, stand up. William wants to know your name because William will make it to your caucus and vote for you. Because he's coming to mind and vote for me, right? So <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to go really quick because then we have speakers. Good evening. My name is Mark.
Martin Cup Files running for two caucuses, one for the 14th Congressional District as the treasurer, and the second one as vice president, or one of the vice presidents of the uh, new Black Progressive Caucus, the game changer. For the Michigan Black Caucus. So he's running as our vice chair. You're interested? I'm interested, but I haven't decided on the caucus yet. But my name is Jerome Breckett, Precinct Delegate District 3. Okay. Anybody else that introduce yourself before we get to Ryan and we shoot all the questions? Just about us doing <laughs> stuff? <laughs> <laughs> what, just, just anything or what? Yeah. Anthony Thomas, I'm running for the Black Caucus. Yeah. Well, this might not work out for me. <laughs> Lena Thompson, Black Caucus, and also a State Central Delegate for the 13th. Okay, so if you're in the 13th, guess what? You can vote for Lena. If you're just a precinct delegate, you can come at 9 o'clock in the morning and vote for for Black Hawkins. Okay. You're a precinct dog, you're gonna be a part of it, don't worry. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yep. Executive board member. Oh, you who is like you on? You wanna be on ours? Or you want the other guy? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, you're on ours then. <laughs> Some of them have Facebook pages, not all of them. Um, and then uh, some of them have websites. Um, but it's always good to call the chair. No, I doubt it. No. <laughs> 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 environmental voters or environmental within the party. 
Um, so they kind of serve as a conduit of information, not just um, for us to them, but also from their members to us. So oftentimes you will have those caucuses meeting and discussing issues that are pertinent to their community or their cause. So that's effectively what a caucus does. Our congressional districts also meet in caucus at state convention, but that's because they act as, as one group to elect their leadership or advance a, a resolution or an issue or anything like that. So um, they're, they're kind of just interest groups um, for, for different affiliations, if that makes sense. Does that answer your question? Okay. All right, so. Really has power. Sorry? They don't have specific power other than the fact that it's X number of people communicating the same thing. Sure, yeah. Well, there's definitely power in numbers, right? I mean, if they have a huge caucus and uh, they're really passionate about a certain issue or a piece of legislation and they want to push that in the party platform or they want to push the party to um, support something, uh, the more numbers that they have within the party, the more power they have. So there's, there's something to be said about that. So what I specifically want to talk about today is state convention. Uh, I passed around a lunch page. I wasn't sure how many people were going to be here today, so I only made 50 copies, so I apologize and share with your neighbor. Um, this is also going to go up on our website. So we recognize there's a lot of new members coming into the party, a lot of new members, big um, And so we want to <laughs> as much information as possible to help. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the one pager. It's real simple. Um, so we're going to go over that. I'm not going to give a lengthy presentation today, but I will answer all the questions that you have. Uh, and if you have more, um, keep talking, and, and I'll probably answer for you. Um, all right, so I, I just want to start by talking about the three types of conventions that we do have, because there are three distinct types of party convention. The first is a nominating convention, uh, which if you were around in August, is there to basically place uh, the party's nomination for a candidate. So we do this for statewide offices that don't otherwise have a primary, like the governor. So for example, Mark Schauer last time had a primary, he didn't have a challenger, but the voters in the primary determine who the party's nominee will be. For other statewide offices like Attorney General, Secretary of State, State Supreme Court, uh, State Board of Education, and the three state university boards, all of those are party nominated positions, which means the only way that you get the party's nod is if the convention nominates you. They officially put you on the ballot. So that's the first type of convention. Those take place in even numbered years, um, every two years. So it's always 2014, 2016, we'll have another one in 2018. Second kind of convention is the endorsement convention. The endorsement convention is, is going to be new to the party that's coming in 2018. And effectively what it does is it offers the party endorsement before the nominating convention, months before. Um, and basically what that's designed to do is allow candidates to get the party's nod much earlier in the year so that they can do what they need to do to win. I think all of us recognize that uh, nominating our candidates and having them hit the ground in August is not enough time to raise money. It's not enough time to raise your name ID. And it's really not enough time to unify Democrats behind you. So by having an endorsement convention, that's going to allow those candidates that opportunity. Um, that will take place every four years in even numbered years when there's a statewide election. So starting in 2018, then again in 2020, and on until the end of time. Um, that convention is optional. So the state central committee, months before that is, is set to happen, will make a decision as to whether or not we're ready to have an endorsement convention or not. So that may or may not happen in 2018. Um, the third kind is a party leadership convention, or they would call it a party conference in the UK and many other places around the world. And effectively, that's what we're going to be doing uh, in February, and that is to elect the party's leadership. Um, so for the MVP's purposes, we elect our statutory officers. Uh, at that convention, we elect our state central committee members and our district executive committee and district officers. All of that takes place at your congressional district caucus. It's going to be very busy. Um, that takes place every two years on month. So again, 17, we'll have it again at 19, and so on and so forth. Make sense? Any questions so far? A lot of people asleep. Uh, all right. So, who calls the state convention? Uh, state conventions, the, the first two types are mandated in state election law. The timing and the purpose and all of that, uh, we have to have them, and the Republicans have to have them, so we're always fighting for space. Um, we, we usually win. That's why we always get Cobo in the Lansing Center, because we're usually out ahead of them. Um, but basically, the State Central Committee officially calls the convention, so it's up to them to set the rules and the ground game and the official time and all of that fun stuff. Um, but, but it does, uh, it is laid out in state election law as well. Um, you'll always see that we call conventions, you guys get notices in the mailbox, at least 60 days before any state convention. So 
You know, a lot of people aren't really thinking about February, but I, we emailed back in November and December about this, so we get started and for as early as possible to give people some notice. Who participates in state conventions? So this is one thing that sets us apart from the Republicans. In the Republican Party, the only people who can vote at state convention are precinct delegates, so folks like yourselves. That's why they, they often uh, they have some pretty sporty conventions, because it's a small, tight-knit group, uh, and if you're not in the club, they're gonna tear you apart. Uh, our party's a little bit more open, so precinct delegates and elected officials obviously vote at that convention. In addition to that, we have our party membership. So because we have this membership program, uh, it allows us to basically open up and expand access to the convention to people who actually are involved and engaged in the party, not just people who are elected. So that's why our conventions are typically a little bit bigger, um, and, and it's, I think it's more representative of the Democratic Party when you have more people in the tent, basically. Um, so that deadline passed on January 8th. I know that people have questions about the membership right now. Um, we just finished entering the thousands and thousands of renewals and people joining uh, last week, or earlier this week. Um, so the cards will be going out before convention, so when that comes in the mail, save that, because that's going to save you some time when you show up to get your credentials, you can just scan your card and it'll print off for you, so it's pretty easy. Um, local conventions, so those are taking place this weekend. Basically, local conventions take place before every state convention, it's kind of like a primer, um, but their, their most important function is to elect convention committee members. So there are three convention committees for every state convention, rules, credentialing, and resolutions, and basically what those committees do is they either set the rules for the convention and lay the groundwork, they whittle down the number of resolutions. If you guys have ever been to a local convention, you know that we get dozens and dozens, sometimes up to 200 resolutions, um, saying a whole lot of stuff, so it's a lot to go through. So we can't put that in front of a full statewide convention. We would never, uh, we would never go home and all of the staff would quit. So we're not, we're never gonna, we're never gonna allow that to happen. So we have a committee that specifically reviews all of that and decides what the convention is gonna see. Um, and the third is the credentialing committee. Uh, they never meet unless there's a problem with credentials. For those of you that were around back in 2013, the only time the credential committee that I can recall was ever involved was in the Brewer and Johnson fight when there was a question over party membership uh, and who could actually vote at the convention. So the credentialing committee met then, they got it together, and ultimately the convention went on. There were 3,300 people at convention that day, so it was huge. Um, so those are pretty much why you attend the local conventions. I guess the second reason, the final reason, is to obviously consider those resolutions locally, so if there are local issues and things that uh, you want to raise, bring to the attention of the state party, that's usually done through a resolution at a local convention. So all of that is, is what they do to kind of prime us for state convention. They meet in between, and then we all meet on February 11th. Everyone with me so far? Yeah. All right, last piece. Um, how many of you guys hate proportional voting? <laughs> Nobody? What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> proportional, proportional voting. The slates. All right, the slates and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm here to, I'm here to put it to you this way. Mm -hmm. Proportional voting uh, is oftentimes misunderstood. It's oftentimes maligned. It's mm -hmm. people saying that uh, it's unfair. Actually, the real purpose of proportional voting is to ensure two things. One, it ensures that competing slates, people with different ideas and different views, actually get a piece of the pie. Yep. So in that way, it actually ensures fairness. If you get two groups competing against each other, one gets 60, one gets 40, they're both gonna get a piece of the pie. That's actual fairness. It's not just first past the post, you win everything and the other guy loses and goes home. Right? We'd never build a party that way. The second reason, and a lot of people don't realize this, in the metro Detroit area, but in the outstate area, proportional voting ensures that every single county gets the full allocation of delegate votes that they're supposed to that they're supposed to get. So those delegate votes are determined after each election. So if you get only ten people showing up at a convention from a from a smaller county, those ten people will actually have a little bit more voting power to represent their entire county than just being ten people who show up. So it, it's two ways in which it ensures fairness. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about slate voting because it's what you're going to deal mostly with. If you want to follow along on this sheet, it's really simple again. If not, it'll be online for you. But basically, slates are put together. They include as many people as there are uh, seats to be filled or as few as one person. It's, it's your right as a party member to run individually if you want to. Um, but you should try and run on a slate that's full because people just want to vote for a full slate, not just one person. Um, but that's just a, a personal opinion. Um, the slate will be officially placed into nomination at convention when they call for it. So someone will approach you with a piece of paper and they'll say, this is my slate, place it into nomination. 
Uh, from there, the order in which the names are listed on the slate sheet is the order in which they will be elected. So if you're at the bottom of that slate, it's a higher probability you're not going to make it past the finish line because the other slates will eat you up, basically, if you're at the bottom. Um, in multi-county districts, voters from each county will be weighed, I already talked a little bit about this, but they're weighed against the allocation of their delegate votes, which again comes after each statewide election. Each voter casts one vote for the slate of their choosing. Uh, and then members usually, the way this is done is you will raise your, your car, you get a credential. Some people stick them on their chest, you can do that, but just take it off, you'll use a hand card. Uh, and then they'll count it up. They put it into a tabulator, spits out exactly what each slate, what each slate gets, uh, and that's ultimately who wins. So, I know we talked about a lot, I droned on and on, so let's get into questions, because I feel like that's probably what people are more interested in. Let's keep it to questions about state convention, and then if there are questions about the party or anything else you want to tear me up over, let's save that for let's save that for the end. Does that work? All right. Yeah. Question in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So so typically, I mean, each caucus and each. Um, Congressional district does a little bit differently. They might limit it to having one person speak for the entire slate. They might let each person speak. Frankly, I think you probably should limit it to having just one person speak for the whole slate and what you're about, because otherwise, again, you'll be there all day. You've got about an hour and a half to get through it. But yeah, typically there's a time for Q and A, and, and uh, they'll they'll have like a write up about themselves sometimes, or they'll just talk about themselves. Uh, yeah. If you have a card that needs to be validated. Could you please write your name on it and sit it at the front of the desk at the table? And Malia is going to come around and get them and go validate them for you. <laughs> All right, let's get back to questions. Sorry. I'm interested in two of the caucuses. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to just that date say I'm interested to show up for me. So every caucus has their own set of rules. It depends on what two caucuses you are interested in. Some um, basically revert back to party membership and require that you just be a party member. Um, I would say a, a lot of them do that because they don't maintain lists. Um, and then others may do that and they may require you to have been a member or to sign up when you get there. It just depends depending on the caucus. So what do I do? You should go to that caucus so that we, we give you guys the list of all the places that are going to be meeting and what caucuses. You should go there. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's online as well, but you should go there um, and they'll either have a table there or you can just go right in. Either way, you can always just attend a caucus and if you just want to go and watch or listen or ask questions, um, that's open to everybody. You can't volunteer for anything at that time. Well, it depends on, well, it depends on what their requirements are. Yeah, but, but I, would, I would go. I would go if it's a caucus particularly you're interested in, in learning more about. Um, it's, it's a good time to actually meet other like-minded people, but also to meet the leadership as well. I guess. Other questions? So, yeah. They have to go to Harvard Cup Lounge. All right. How do you go about getting calls? And when can they change the rules? Like, can they change the rules the day of? No. We, I mean, we don't like to change the, the rooms the day of because that's chaos. Um, caucus rooms, we, we try and reserve them for chartered caucuses through the party. Um, we, if we have extra space, we've given it out in the past to different groups who just ask us. We just do that on a first come, first serve basis. This year, we're trying to limit that a little because we got a lot of people who want rooms. Um, and the reality at the end of the day is that someone else is paying for those rooms. So we're happy to give it to our caucuses for free. We're happy to give it to a couple groups for free. But if it gets too big, we're going to have to limit that back down. And the second question is uh, do we have an estimated number of new members for this party? Right now? I don't have I know it's, it's in the thousands, which is not uncommon for a, a statewide convention. Usually this is the time that everyone kind of snaps back and realizes, oh, I love my membership. Yeah, I mean, it happens. Trump to make you kind yeah, of well, I am Trump. Yeah, people are pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm confused about, I'm actually Taylor. Uh, I'm confused about the rooms and the process. Is, does each room give a presentation that we sit through? We just, I mean, if I, I'm not, but if I were interested, So it depends on the caucus. Yep. Most caucuses at this convention are going to be electing their party, their, their leadership for the actual caucus. So they'll be electing uh, their officers, maybe an executive committee or some kind of board. 
Um, so most of them will use up the time that they're given. So we've only given them an hour and a half. We're trying to make convention not so long. I mean, there were times it used to be two days. We're trying to get it down to one day. We're trying to make that one day suck less. So <laughs> we're getting it tighter. So, but it, it probably will take most of the hour and a half. Um, so if you're going to attend a caucus, you should you should pick the one that you really want to attend and go to that caucus. You and you likely to be able to get informed about it in advance by talking to people. You know about who's on the slate. Yeah. So if you're if you're involved in the caucus itself, uh, I mean, again, they they kind of manage their own memberships. They manage their own lists of people who they give information to. Um, so if you're a part of a caucus, I mean, I assume that they, they do send out that information about uh, what exactly they're going to be doing. What caucus like are you interested in? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a list of telephone numbers of the chairs. I, I, I suggest that you, that you that online, or you can ask anyone that's involved with the Black Caucus that's here. They'll give you some information, um, but there, there is a list. I can give you a. He wants to know about because he's in a progressive cause, so he wants to be able to go. Oh, yeah, the voting if thing. You yeah. Know what time you vote? Guess what? We'll be in there. But you know what? <laughs> the good thing about that is we have been blessed and joined yeah. by the 14th congressional district chair. <laughs> Yep. see every dollar that the party spends. Um, not a, okay, well, most dollars. Most dollars. The dollars that matter, um, you can see online. And it's usually through the FEC because our reports are filed uh, publicly. I'll tell you what Lon Johnson told me. No! no. 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 <laughs> every, every, political, every, political, every political committee that is filed has to report all of their findings. Do the FEC. You can okay. go to the state, the state secretary, state website, yeah, and see most questions. of it as well. Yeah, I'll take a couple more questions. Do you have a question over here? No. I wasn't. Nobody? Okay, right here. I don't no. see any times down here for the caucus. So how do we know what time? What time for who? the who? That's the time. Yeah, that's, it started. That's it. it started. So everybody, to everybody is at nine to ten thirty. Yep. You, can, you gotta pick your own. Oh. There are some at 9 and 10.30. No, There's no, two no, sets. Wait, wait. There's two Action sets. Action was the exact time for the votes. We don't know. Yet. Right. So, like, yes. what we're doing, sorry, Ryan, for the progressive caucus, we're going to talk to Bob and see what time he's okay. going to, you know, that's the only thing we can do for the progressive. Yeah, that's right. Because we don't have an exact time right. for the black caucus, because you know they probably close the doors at a certain right. time, so right. we need to relay that to the progressive caucus, exactly. like, hey, our doors, you know. So... Yeah, that's what yeah. It's no exact time. Okay. Yeah. All right, a couple more questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what um, you see with parking. You got to pay on parking or something like that. What? Parking? Parking. You got to pay on parking. Yeah, you got to pay on parking. Yeah, pay on parking. <laughs> um, but I think it's, it, what is it? it's free on the street on the weekends, right? No, no not Saturday. <laughs> what? Not this green. Saturday. Parking cowboy won't get towed. That's the best one. Right. So I think it's 10 bucks. Any more questions? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can go to the Greek town. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One meeting, one meeting, one meeting. Go ahead. What's, what's the state central, or what's the executive committee? Yeah, so the state central committee, it, I know it sounds very like Soviet Union, um, mm -hmm. but basically what it is is it's the decision-making body for the party. So state convention is the ultimate authority one day a year. The state central committee is the ultimate authority 364 days a year. So they meet uh, about four times a year to you know, make decisions on policy and different stuff like that. The executive committee um, is basically a board of officers. It's a smaller version of like general membership so they can make faster decisions. So they, a lot of times executive committees will serve to like approve budgets and spend money and that sort of stuff um, because a, a general membership is so vast that you really couldn't Walter, I think the candidates are chosen for those uh, committees, or are they? Um, um, yeah, well, it depends.
depends on what you're talking about. So the, the district executive committees are being formed right now. Right. The uh, Michigan Democratic Party executive committee won't come together until like April or May. What congressional district are you in? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in the 13th. Um, yeah, we'll talk after. Yeah, usually they're pretty big, yeah. right? I mean, because I'm on state. You want to be a part of it. I'm on the slate for state senses. Mm -hmm. But we'll, yeah, I'll talk to you after. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, how do you go about getting involved in the state uh, executive board? The state executive board? Yeah. Uh, this, so the state central committee will make those appointments. Usually the chair puts together, a, it's a, usually a small group. Um, and then that basically gets run through the state central committee in April or May, whenever they meet. So if you wanted to, you'd have to reach out to the, the party chair. Yep. All right, questions about the state party that aren't related to state convention, anything else like that? You get punched around a little bit? <laughs> no? No, you're fine. All right, everyone we loves the party. Everyone, everyone loves MVP. Good job. <laughs> Trump, whether that election is that election is over and done. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have a question back there, real quick. How many people on what? It, 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 it's a. Uh, it, it depends. What kind of committee are you talking about? Convention committees are limited to usually four per congressional district. There's two members and two alternates. Um, and then most other committees are as big as they want to be. Right. It's, it's better to have a bigger committee to provide for more inclusion from other individuals. So you, you want to, you wanna, if somebody is talking about having a small committee, you want to encourage them to be more inclusive and, and include more people on their committee and make it more robust. Last question, then we got to move on to the chairman. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You go ahead. Is there an impeachment office? Uh, that's not a bad idea. And can we start Yes, you, yeah, I wouldn't. You can start any focus that you want to. You gotta go through the party chair. Okay. Okay. Precinct delegates. Precinct delegates. Yes. Hello. We gotta get excited about this election. Oh yeah. And you know we got this local election going on. We're not gonna mess up like we did in November. But I just want to make sure that you, everybody knows that it's usually not just me alone. I got my road dog, Ray Solomon. Yay! Yeah, Woo! Yeah, Ray. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, And you know she's running this year, okay? Yeah. Right. Don't make All no right. mistakes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and uh, back to our 14th Congressional District. Oh, yeah. Yeah. delegates and they need to be educated about yes. what about this convention so I want to thank you Ryan and thank Brandon I know he couldn't make it down for this but he was here earlier for a protest okay right. so we got the right yeah. person all right. right all right thank yeah. God bless you Ryan. Thank you for coming. protesting yeah. against yeah. the labor secretary that Trump is putting in who was the CEO of the look up later you know I'm on, I'm on camera <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> okay, I think that's it, y'all. I'm gonna shut it down because I'm running out of power anyway. So, peace out.